Hi, I'm Ian Cole bringing you an IAQA tech tip on the microbiome. Did you know that there are more microbial cells in and on your body than human cells? By a factor of 10 or more. The term microbiome is used to describe the microorganisms in a particular environment. The microbiome of humans has received much press as of late. Scientists are learning how microorganisms play an important role in many of our body's processes. The presence or absence of a certain microorganism may be a good predictor for a particular disease. But what about the presence or absence of a certain microorganism in buildings? Can that predict anything? There's been a big push to study the microbiome of the built environment. With new, high-throughput, molecular tools and techniques, much can be learned about microbial diversity and taxonomic identities in buildings, and how they change over time and distance. Human-related bacteria often dominate indoor microbial communities. However, building design and operation will also greatly influence these bacterial communities. Building factors such as type of ventilation can impact the diversity and structure of the microbiome. But what does all this mean? We don't quite know yet. Our ability to collect data with new molecular tools has outpaced our ability to understand its impact on human health. In fact, we don't necessarily know if more microorganisms indoors is good or bad. In the future, we may be designing and operating buildings in such a way to optimize the microbiome of the built environment to promote health. There's still much more to learn. I'm particularly excited about new discoveries on how the building's microbiome affects human health. To keep abreast of emerging topics such as the microbiome of the built environment, consider joining the Indoor Air Quality Association. You'll receive a weekly digest of the latest news and research related to the indoor environment.